So when you're hitting your golf ball on your club face, you got to hit it exactly in the middle or hopefully within a sixteenth of an inch. Then you're going to hit some very powerful wow shots, right? And as I showed in the, in the initial audition video, if you strike just fractions of an inch away from that, then your shots will get progressively not so great. So just as an example, let's say I'm going to hit one flush, and it may be difficult to see. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the ball take off at least. But I'm going to hit one flush. <laughs> now it's funny on that one I didn't because I had a mental thought, make sure you hit it flush. So I actually distracted myself from my task of hitting the ball cleanly by worrying whether or not I would. Sound familiar? You see, the reason why golfers often uh, hit bad shots has nothing really to do with their skill level. It has to do with what I call mental noise thoughts that interfere with your striking skill. So this time, I'm going to focus fully on making a decent swing and cleanly striking the ball. And so I do as soon as my mental focus is correct. Now on this next one, on purpose, I'm going to strike the ball about five-eighths of an inch down the face. So essentially in that yellow to just on the edge of the red zone, if you recall my, uh, my audition video. So now I'm going to hit it a bit thin. Okay, I sculled it. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Let me try that again. There. That's better. So I just hit that right where I said I would, about five-eighths of an inch below the center of the face. And hopefully you'll pick up on the camera that it went screaming low and didn't take off properly. I probably would have lost 25 yards of distance on that shot. And all it is is a fraction more than a half an inch. Now, when you don't strike the ball properly, all of your golfing friends uh, will pipe up and say, oh, you lifted your head on that one. You bent your left arm on that one. Your knees are straightening. You're losing your spine angle with the idea that, bug's getting right in my eye, Ooh. with the idea that somehow you're going to be able to tell that your body parts change their positions or motions by fractions of an inch. Now, this is why golf is so difficult, because those skills that I learned instinctively when I was a 10-year-old boy, that Tiger Woods learned instinctively when he was a 2, 3, 4, and 5-year-old boy, that most of the top tour pro pros learned when they were very, very young, those skills are the foundation of everything. And so as a result, the top tour players naturally develop the skill, and then they might refine with better grip and setup and biomechanics, which essentially just makes you hit it a little bit farther and a little bit straighter and more consistently. So they develop these skills very naturally and very easily. And then what happens is they start telling people that really what I'm doing is I'm loading my shoulders and I'm sliding my hips laterally and I'm keeping my elbow close to my side. But in truth, when they, were, when they had fully developed their skill as little kids, they weren't thinking anything about any of those things. So it's really, really important that you understand that the whole premise of real swing golf is basically a complete paradigm shift. If you think of a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift essentially is a paradigm is essentially an accepted way of viewing something. So for example, uh, back many hundreds of years ago, people thought that when people got sick and sicknesses spread, it was because of evil spirits or something causing this illness. Well, I think it was I think it was Florence Nightingale who figured out actually if we use some soap and water and we wash our hands when we're dealing with sick people, all of a sudden, wow, <laughs> illness stops spreading. Unbelievable. Here's another paradigm shift. When we wake up in the morning and we see the sun start over in the east and work its way over to the west. Well, common observation back hundreds of years ago had the idea that, well, nothing's moving here. The earth seems completely fixed, but the sun goes this way across. And it was only through uh, scientific observation, I believe it was Galileo, who 
figured out that in fact the Sun is fixed we orbit around the Sun and our rotation spinning rotation every 24 hours is what makes the Sun appear to be fixed or pardon me that makes us appear to be fixed and the Sun going around us when in fact it's the other way around that's a very good analogy for what I want to help you understand is the the paradigm shift here in terms of how a human being actually strikes a golf ball okay now I want to briefly uh, summarize this concept by saying this the swing creates the mechanics the mechanics do not create the swing let me say that again the swing creates the mechanics the mechanics do not create the swing here's an example I'll teach people how to get the club swinging freely fluidly and fast and I'm not going to give away the secret because you see you need to vote for me as the Golf Channel's next instructor and then I'll, I'll explain it all <laughs> um, but I'll get someone swinging correctly freely fluidly fast in a matter of minutes and if you haven't checked out the before and after videos that I've uh, seen in, in uh, that I've given you a link for in the other uh, in the description page of the other YouTube video that I did and this one as well it's kind of at the bottom of the you'll see it right along down here um, so click on that link and look at before and after videos of golfers whose swings change very very dramatically and they learn how to swing freely fluidly fast in just a few minutes so I'll get someone swinging and they'll come to me with a swing that's really weak and doesn't have any power to it and then a few minutes later they're swinging properly they're shifting their weight they're following through all of the things that they're supposed to do and so we talk about creating power and then someone will say well where does the power come from is it from moving the legs laterally is it do I keep my elbow here is it coiling against my my hips which how does that all work and then I use this little exercise and I say to the person I'll pick up a few golf balls and I say okay here's what I'd like you to do I'd like you to take this ball and throw it two feet so they'll look at me kind of funny and go okay throw it two feet um, and they'll do something like that and then I'll say okay what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take this ball and throw it as far as you possibly can pretend you're in the World Series and you've got the tying run uh, tagging up at second you're catching the outfield and he's gonna try and beat you all the way home and then they go okay and then all of a sudden there's this tremendous difference in how the body moves and that's because of this important fact your body will simply obey whatever instructions it receives from your mind so when the person thought to throw the ball two feet the wrist did a little tiny flip and the fingers flipped the ball forward two feet the body did what was appropriate to the mind's objective then when the objective was to throw the ball as far as possible all of a sudden there's all there's rearing back on the right side there's the rotation of the torso with all the sequence of movement that's necessary to propel a ball really far now did that person actually think about all of the parts and uh, which part did what and the elbow the hip going first and then the body coming around the elbow leading the wrist back and then the did they think about any of that of course not they were just simply throwing the ball as far as they could 